And so we are going to look at how to take some of these installers that I've been using to create Anton, which is my name for my VM here, and do it from Ansible and see if we can, you know, standardize that on Ansible. I've never used it. Virtual machine that we can mess with and snap back and everything uh, in addition to my regular one. And because it's bridged, they're all like their computers sitting next to each other. It's as if I had three computers on my, my table right now and they're all sitting here connected to the same Wi-Fi. Uh, or, you know, plugged in or whatever. That So that's how we're going to do it. Yes, bridge networking. Yes. Now watch this. Now doesn't that confuse the shit out of you? What did I just do? What, Mr. Rob, are you doing? <laughs> how did you get bash on your Windows machine without WSL2? I'm going to tell you. Is Git bash. And I wrote a thing in my Settlecast about this today. Git bash is the most underrated modern way to get bash that there is. Angry security noises. I know like, about oh bridge. Oh no, where's the C drive? CD slash C. Boom. Now it's like all the Windows stuff. See how much easier that was? That's even easier than WSL2. And it says the same thing. Except for you know what you're dealing with. And also something else. It actually gets the permissions right. WSL2 doesn't do any of that. I can't believe how much better it is. SSH, SSH, open SSHD, config. And I can go in here and do all my stuff. So this is the thing when you're doing it. You got to make sure that you put your keys in this weird place. Otherwise it'll get screwed because it, it has a special place to put administrator keys. A special place to put administrator keys. It's actually easier to get admin access by SSHing into your machine like this than it is to actually use Windows because you have to go through that run as administrator shit. But if you SSH into it, it automatically sets you as administrator. That's why it has a special way to set it up. It's super cool. Weird shit. Oh my God. I made a Zettelcast about this. So get you have to go look at it. I, I did the text in there. So uh, when I removed uh, uh, WSL2, my Git repo was corrupt. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. That actually happened. Hello, Saros TV. Now I can't commit objects to my Zet repo. The only thing that changed was removing WSL2, which I'm also positive is fucking the file system somehow. There is no fucking way I'll ever trust Windows to do this stuff. Stay the fuck off WSL2. That is the takeaway of that. Uh, again, I don't have proof, but I have enough sub you know, evidence to suggest that I made the right decision by just using a VM from now on. Oh, whoops, sorry. Zet chat. I have... Uh, I wrote a pros and cons list, you know, and then I added the corruption thing today to it. Uh, here's the other one. So those are the two things if you want to read them up and see, again, why I dropped WSL2. Remarkably performant. It is. A headless VM is remarkably performant. People misjudge, and I certainly did. They misjudge virtual machines because they think they have to use the graphic terminal for the... But if you'd use a headless one and it's essentially to it, it's just a really awesome server on your local desktop. Yeah, more Fusion or, or VirtualBox or whatever or just Docker, because I had to like, well, all these people got M1s, so they're not going to be able to work with this and participate. And they can, as long as we're using VirtualBox. But it could be updated, and then I'm just going to tell them, hey, just give VMware Fusion and do the same thing. Uh, but you're going to have to pay virtualized operating systems. Because that way, they can, it separates the upgrade path from the hardware and the OSs. And it allows their OSs to run on anything. And I think it's actually happening. I think it's happening. I think that's really strong evidence that that's what's happening. Do you realize what that's going to do, right? That's going to allow all of those people to get off of x86 and run on whatever they want to. Because as soon as they do that, then VirtualBox... So the virtualization software is really, really key here. Because that's going to be the top. Manage, uh, start VM-T headless... Uh, and let's see, Ansible test. There we go. And it's going to take a little bit to come up. Now it's up and we can SSH into it. So, we've had a number of people who have been like following along with the boost through all of my crazy chaotic way of trying to help people learn stuff, which is mostly just about convincing them to go learn on their own. And here's somebody who said, I started learning Bash and Linux and doing my own Raspberry Pi server and completely fall in love with this shell. And more of that is to come. Thank God. It's just, it's just like I got a server, except for it's on my computer. 192.168.1.25. Do you want to authenticate? Yes, please. Boom! 
So what did I do here? I made uh, an entry here from Anton, which is another VM. It's Bridge Network, which means it's like I just put it on the shelf back here. So they're all on 192.168, which is served up by my router. Uh, my router is good at giving the same one every time. And then I can just SSH into it. And, and Ansible is going to do the same thing. Pretty damn good. There's no doubt. And there we are. We have the examples. So we have some examples to look at. Uh, if you want the clone script, you can go get it. The clone function. Type clone. There it is. That's how you do a clone from the command line. The original LAMP stack. And they took a lot of lot of liberties with it. And now it's all about the MERN stack. Mongo, Express, React, Node. They like they love their little acronym things. Um uh, <laughs> persistent object oriented programming. <laughs> I can go on. Um uh, and have I actually walked into that one once. I was going to do Perl object-oriented programming, and I was like, oh, well, we can't use that. Or Python object-oriented programming. That can be used with single and multiple nodes. Uh, <laughs> lead poop down. <laughs> I don't find anything bad about going down this poop rabbit hole. It's kind of fun. The rule is the, the root user is explicit, so it takes precedent. Containerize remote Ansible playbook. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it should be why, yeah. No, I did not get paid for that. <laughs> uh uh. So I was just really into it because I was doing file system as a database. It was called FADBO was the thing I was doing. I was doing a lot of debugging. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Uh, oh, something good happened, people. Something good happened. I'm making progress very slowly. So from the perspective of specific tasks I need to accomplish and then I'll come back and do the comprehensive thing and the next the next specific task I need to do is install nmap on a machine using the apt summer self-study um I live I learned all my languages by living there that is the short answer that is the short answer Yes, I studied my ass off in America, but you don't learn a language until you live there. 